Welcome back to the Swampcast. Once again, I'm Bullfrog, the one commentator with absolutely no credibility whatsoever. An article on the uh, Federalist.com has got me quite outraged. Just I'll read a little bit of this article to you. Mom dresses six-year-old son as a girl. Threatens dad with losing his son for disagreeing. Six-year-old James is caught in a gendered identity nightmare. Well, under his, under his mother's care in Dallas, Texas, James lives obediently as a trans girl named Luna. But given the choice when he's with dad, he's all boy, his sex at birth. And in divorce proceedings, the mother has charged the father with child abuse for not affirming James as transgender and has sought restraining orders against him and is seeking to terminate his parental rights. She is also seeking to require him to pay for the child's visits to transgender affirming therapists and transgender medical alterations, which may include hormonal sterilization starting at age 8. Now, this is just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, there's no reason why some 8-year-old kid needs to be going on hormonal sterilization. That's going to mess that kid up. He goes on to say that when he's around anybody else besides his mother, he is all boy. He uh, wants to be a boy. He identifies as a boy. He wants to go by his real name, James. But only around his mother that he, does he actually uh, dress like a girl. When he's with his father, he has the choice to either dress like a girl or a boy and chooses to dress as a boy. Now, I don't know why the hell his mother's doing this bullshit, but, um, yeah, this is a sick fucking woman. I'm just going to say a flat out, she's a sick woman for doing this to this little kid. And, of course, you know, now his father might lose his parental rights, visitation, and whatnot now because, because he would, he won't go along with this freaking bullshit of uh, try, trying to make a six-year-old boy a transgender. Now, I don't really think, I don't want to see how a six-year-old can really be diagnosed with uh, gender dysphoria. I think that you would have to be at least in puberty. Just like I talked about last week. Uh, you, you should. I think that you should be at least going through pu puberty before you can actually be truly diagnosed with this. And as far as, uh, you know, this hormonal therapy, that should be left up to somebody who is at least 18. Putting this six-year-old boy through this is sick. This is child abuse flat out. And child abuse is not something I take very lightly at all. This woman needs, I, you know, th this kid needs to be taken... Uh, away from this from this mother though she is she's just she's gonna fuck this kid up yeah so that's basically all i have to say on this in particularly though but uh, yeah th th there's no reason why a six-year-old boy should be even diagnosed with with gender dysphoria and she's obviously you know forcing me into forcing him into it so they don't take this kid away from his mother she's gonna fuck him up that's just, just flat out The whole Laura Loomer fiasco has been quite the uh, hot topic this week. Uh, on Thursday, she handcuffed herself to Twitter's Manhattan headquarters after being banned from Twitter for sending a tweet that said, quote, Isn't it ironic how the Twitter movement used to celebrate women, LGBTQ, and minorities is a picture of Liham Omar. Liham is pro-Sharia. Liham is pro-FGM. Under Sharia, homosexuals are oppressed and killed. Women are abused and forced to wear the hijab. Lehan is anti-Jewish, unquote. While handcuffed, she was wearing a gold Jewish star, much like the ones worn by the Jewish people during the Holocaust, and also holding a banner, which was a very blown up screenshot of her tweet. Now, I do agree that her being banned for hate speech after saying this is actually, is pretty stupid. Twitter obviously has a very far left leaning bias. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is definitely full of shit. You know, he went on to today's show saying, oh no, we don't ban people or, or censor people based on their political views. Oh, we don't do that. He obviously fucking does. Now, on the other hand, though, Laura Loomer's actions here are definitely very overly dramatic. It's obviously a cringy publicity stunt. Now, she's basically just a right-wing SJW. And yes, right-wingers can be SJWs as well. After handcuffing herself to Twitter's Manhattan headquarters, she said, I will stand here for as long as it takes. After about two hours, she finally asked the police to cut the chain on her handcuffs as she did not have a key. After which, she was just simply let go. So she accomplished absolutely nothing. However, she definitely got the attention that she was probably craving. However, she did not get her Twitter account reinstated. Like a good SJW, she's really playing that victim narrative. So, hashtag thought audit has been quite the hot ticket lately. So apparently some uh, chicks online who uh, sell their nudes and whatnot on, on uh, places like Snapchat and whatnot are now being reported to IRS by a bunch of internet trolls. Now, first of all, like, how big of a freaking cuck do you have to be to actually pay a chick for her nudes? Like, you can see naked women all over the internet for absolutely free. And, uh, another thing that's going on here is a lot of these chicks are just freaking out, saying, saying that, well, we shouldn't have to pay taxes, uh, this isn't a real job, or if you, uh, don't make this amount of money, you don't have to pay taxes. Now, my opinion on taxes is that 
taxes are theft. I don't really, I don't feel like the government should should be entitled to what I earn. But if I have to pay taxes or go to prison, now I don't think anybody else should be able to weasel out paying taxes either. So these chicks, you gotta pay their taxes too, if I got to. So a lot of them are uh, freaking out saying, oh, I'm the, the freaking IRS is fucking auditing me. Let's see one tweet here. It says, all t attention all SWs, sex workers, if you have your Snapchat, Venmo, Cash App, etc. on your profile, take it down and delete it. And cells are reporting y'all to the IRS. Please be careful. We need to look out for one another. Yeah, I'm just kind of scrolling through, uh, scrolling through here, looking at some of this stuff. Now, if you're uh, making money on on the internet, if you're uh, if you're selling nudes or selling uh, private video chats or whatnot, or your camera girl or whatnot, that that's taxable, taxable income, and it is your responsibility to pay your taxes just like everybody else. Even though I'm not a big fan of taxes, I think they're bullshit. But uh, you know, again, if I gotta pay my taxes, you should have to pay your taxes too. And now, a lot of these chicks that are just so entitled, you know, they think, oh, well, I shouldn't have to pay tax. Yeah, a lot of their uh, customers are also a little pissed off as well because, uh, you know, of course, a lot of these uh, chicks are uh, deleting their accounts and everything, trying to run away from this whole tax thing, and a lot of them are getting pretty pissed off. Uh, I, I see a tweet here that says, I have been talking to this sweet gal and buying her nudes uh, for around six months. What a fucking cuck. Thursday, I decided to finally invest in a lifetime sub subscription to her premium Snapchat. Then that thought audit, ha audit happened, and now she has deleted all her social media and I can't message her. I'm now not only down $500. 500 bucks? Oh my god. $500. With rent coming up on the first. Okay, yeah, let's just blow $500 on some freaking thought on the internet instead of paying your rent. Yeah, smart move. But I have also lost a good friend. Yeah, a good friend. Okay. Uh, fuck you, alt-right. Just fuck you. Dude, you need to go get a life. Huh. <laughs> Anyways, I, I found this quite humorous, actually. There's no way in hell I'd uh, personally pay a chick for a nudes online. You can see it for free all over the internet anyways. A lot of these chicks are just entitled, think they, they shouldn't have to pay their taxes just for being a thought, I guess, or whatever. Most of them probably never thought anything like this would happen, having to pay taxes on the income they get from selling their nudes or, or whatever they're doing online. Welcome to reality. That's something that really pisses me off. Are people who are not only just completely ignorant, but also have no consideration for anyone else. Now, a good example of this is now, uh, the front of my apartment building, we have this uh, stoop. Now, people are not allowed to sit there on that stoop, though. However, we have certain people who like to do it anyways. Uh, there's times when I'm trying to come out the door, and they turn and they see me, and you open the door up, you know, they just, just sit there and look at me, like, da, 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 like, uh, excuse me, I need it through. And they'll, 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 like, move over, like, an inch or something, you know, so... I'll, like, really? So I push the door up, up as far as I can and squeeze through and it's like, for fuck's sake, Christ. And I, I make sure and say it. I kind of whisper it just loud enough to make sure they can hear me saying it. To let them know that, you know, you're pissing me off. Really, and I really want to say, like, can you get off your fucking fat ass and fucking move so I can get through the fucking door? You know, because like, some people you, you just, you need to. And uh, there was another time yesterday, uh, it was kind of a long story though, but I tried to cut it short there. I accidentally bought a pair of headphones that... We're not actually Bluetooth, because I, I was going for some Bluetooth headphones, and I uh, picked up the wrong one, so I went to go uh, take them back, and said, so, alright, you know, we can take these back, and so I went back to the back of the store to uh, pick up some uh, ones that actually are Bluetooth that I wanted to get, and then so I went back up to the customer service so I can get my refund for the other ones. Uh, now, keep in mind, I had about 10 minutes before I had to go, oh, actually, at, th at this point I had about uh, maybe... Three or four minutes, actually, before I had to go catch a bus. And it was Sunday, so uh, the bus is only running once an hour. And it's snow, you know, snow all over the fucking place and everything else. So, And I, want, I don't want to sit outside for another hour waiting for the bus. So when I get back up to customer service, now there's this lady trying to return something, I guess. And he's telling her that, well, okay, you have to take it back to uh, like the location where she bought it. Because she bought it at a different Walmart. And she's bringing it back to the wrong location to get a refund. And she says, well, I, I don't want to have to drive another half an hour to... I don't have fucking time for this. That's why I scream just like, there's other people here besides you. He said you had to go to, to the location where you bought it at to get your refund. Sit there and bitching about how you don't want to drive another half an hour and you're going to do anything for the damn thing. Other people are fucking waiting here, okay? I got to catch a goddamn bus and I don't want to sit for another goddamn hour waiting for the next one. I was so freaking irritated. This lady was completely oblivious to the fact that there's like other people around here who... Need to get things done, but you don't want to stand here and argue about stupid shit. So I just wanted to get that off my chest. So one day Harold goes out and buys himself a nice brand new pair of fancy old cowboy boots. And he uh, comes home and asks his wife, hey, notice anything different? 
says, uh, no, no, don't need to see anything different. And frustrated, he just huffs away and takes all his clothes off and is totally naked except for the boots. And he comes in and says, hey, notice anything different? His wife says, no, it's, uh, no, it's anything different. You really don't see anything different? Harold, it was hanging down yesterday. It was hanging down the day before. And it's hanging down today. He says, well, it's hanging down because it's looking at my new boots. And his wife says, should I buy a hat? Should I buy a hat? That'll do it for this one podcast of this week. Special thanks to Seshu for helping me pimp out this podcast, and I do appreciate all those, all those shout-outs. Had a bit of a bump in subscribers this past week, and so thanks to all the new subscribers, and thanks to everyone who has been subscribed as well. So I'm uh, thinking about maybe once I hit 100 subscribers, I might do a face reveal, maybe. Uh, no guarantees. That's just a, an idea I've been kicking around. So, tune in next week for a new episode of the Swampcast. I'm Bullfrog. Thanks for tuning in.